Our research uh, has demonstrated that uh, it is important uh, to take in, in, into account mixtures of uh, a specific uh, class of substances uh, called endocrine disruptors. So these are substances uh, of a very widespread uh, daily use, uh, substances that uh, we come in contact with uh, through food, uh, water, air. For example, they are part of uh, plastic containers, uh, flame retardants, uh, a lot of materials that are used uh, in, in construction works, uh, cosmetics. Uh, so it's really a, a ubiquitous uh, exposure. And currently the regulatory system uh, tests these substances, uh, and there are hundreds of such substances, at least hundreds, that are put into the market every year as part of uh, new production pipelines. And currently the regulatory system uh, checks for toxicity on a one-by-one one basis. So basically, each of these substances is tested in isolation. And, 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 and for most of them, at least in our part of the world, indeed, the, the individual compounds are below the threshold. But for many years, uh, we and many others had hypothesized that it would actually be the combination, the mixtures of these compounds that could still have a detrimental effect, uh, even if individually each substance was below the threshold. And so we set out uh, together with uh, several co colleagues uh, from other European countries, Sweden, France, and several others. We actually set out uh, to undertake a longitudinal study that would combine epidemiology, so the real life of people exposed to such substances followed through many years, and experimental molecular biology in order to understand whether there was such a risk and how we, we, we could actually deal with it. And the result is that uh, the risk is there because uh, over 2,000 uh, pregnant women were tested for the actual levels of, of, of these substances at about the 10th week of gestation. And then the children originating from these uh, pregnancies were followed uh, through several years uh, and uh, uh, our Swedish co colleagues measured the number of words that these children spoke at 30 months of age. The number of words at 30 months of age is a very important indicator of uh, uh, cognitive proficiency and is also an indicator when uh, it is decreased, so when children uh, speak fewer words, uh, of uh, problems that will unfold later in life, such as, for example, intellectual disability, and also autism spectrum disorder. And uh, it was possible to associate mixtures of these endocrine disruptors uh, to a detrimental outcome in terms of uh, language at uh, 30 months. And so this mixture was then synthesized in vitro in the lab, and uh, we exposed this mixture to brain organoids, so to structures to cultures in vitro that are very complex and that recapitulate over time some of the important features of how the human brain develops in vivo, including its temporal dynamics. And we could find that uh, it, it was actually the mixture of these substances that had a very significant alteration on uh, the neural cells as they de developed and this alteration included uh, pathways that are uh, regulated by hormones, and in fact, uh, these are endocrine disruptors, so they interfere with the way in which hormones work, and most importantly, they actually targeted uh, genes that we already knew on the basis of human genetics evidence uh, to be causally implicated in autism and intellectual disability. The implication for risk assessment is very profound because uh, this study de demonstrates uh, in a rigorous way for the first time that uh, mixtures need to be taken into account. And this of course means that uh, alongside the established systems of testing for toxicity, we actually need uh, to take mixtures into account and to update uh, the assays, the systems uh, through which uh, these compounds are tested so that uh, their toxicity is actually taking into account what happens in the real world. And this study has demonstrated that uh, the exposures of the real world uh, that is pervasive uh, is actually the one that needs to be confronted. I mean, one of the uh, 
most uh, significant aspects of the study is that uh, once uh, uh, it was determined what, what were the experimental thresholds of concern, namely on the basis of the experiments that uh, were done in vitro, what were the thresholds of exposure to these mixtures that were of concern, uh, we then went back to the original data from uh, the pregnant women in Swedish uh, and found that up to 54% of them had been exposed during their pregnancy to such levels of concern. Luckily, this did not mean that 54% of the children ended up having a retardation of language acquisition, but it is because, of course, there is an individual predisposition. But uh, this really should ring a bell because it means that uh, the way in which uh, we, we produce uh, the substances and the way in which we test them and the way in which we live uh, is actually exposing a very significant part of the population to a, an interference that has a very de detrimental impact later on on such fundamental features of the human condition such as uh, language and cognitive development. This research uh, started at the European Institute of uh, Oncology in my lab as part of this uh, very large uh, uh, European project, EDC Mix Risk, uh, funded by the European Co Commission precisely as a project that had to test whether the mixtures was a relevant unit that we should take into account in order to actually protect our health. And on the basis of this result, uh, we will now, of course, proceed at Human Technopol on a number of fronts. First of all, uh, to actually uh, have an even greater mechanistic understanding of how different classes of such compounds and, and mixtures can interfere with the neural pathways. Meanwhile, uh, the children have been uh, uh, profiled for their cognitive attainment through seven years of age, so can, we can have uh, an even greater granularity in the combination be, be, between the, the mixtures uh, in these uh, various uh, neuro de de developmental outcomes. We are also very interested uh, in uh, how the same mixtures actually impact also the formation of the germ cells uh, and how this impact can actually then influence also the formation of uh, the uh, brain in the following generation. And uh, we are of course very interested uh, together with our uh, uh, colleagues as part of another major European project called Endpoints in actually developing assays of neurodevelopmental toxicity. In other words, uh, taking fully on board the implication of this study and making sure that we provide the community with standardized assays that can hopefully allow us all to have a healthier life and a healthier environment.